afternoon. I'd like to call the Rules and Open Government Committee to order. For, this is for um, February 26, 2014. And we will begin with the City Council agenda for March 4th, 2014. Mm -hmm. Are there changes to page one? Are we okay with the 9.30 time? Okay. 9.30 for closed session. Okay. Page two or three. Four or five. Six or seven. Um, Madam Vice Mayor of the Committee, um, item 3.4 is discussion, the discussion item. I don't know if the council is seeking to have or the committee wants to have the council have the ability to give direction uh, or just hear a report. So that's your call but I wanted to at least alert you. It's not, I'm 3.4 on parental leave. Oh, this is the uh, paid parental leave. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Councilmember Herrera? Yeah, I view that item as a discussion input from the staff, not, not a point where we'd be making a decision on it. That's why I asked the question. Okay. Anything okay. else? <laughs> and do we, do we need a motion for that? No, that no, 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 no that's, that's, okay. that's on the agenda. Sorry. Page eight or nine. I just wanted to, I can't remember on the 4.9, is this the one where we asked to get a status of all of the relationships or is that running separately? Okay. That's it. Okay, thanks. Okay. And we have a couple of additions. We have a presentation of a proclamation declaring the month of March 2014 as Arts Education Month and Mayor Reed's travel to Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, make a motion that we approve this with the additions. Second. With the additions, yeah. David Wall, do you want to speak on this item? Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Item 3.3, the library parcel tax. I've requested that the language be reviewed and updated since it's 25 years old and the formula for uh, collecting revenues off of parcels is 25 years old and taxpayers may not be aware of what it is and may not appreciate that. Also, um, with reference to the parcel tax, you're going to be experimenting with additional uh, amendments to parcel taxes uh, for a variety of city uh, funded needs. And so I think you would, I would, re, re, I think you should defer this for a while for further discussion. Item 4.3, the, the rezoning of real property located on the east corner of the intersection of Samaritan Place and Samaritan Drive, basically increasing the number of housing units to 100, from 143 to 153. I continually raise the issue since California is an extreme drought and the uh, Santa Clara Valley Water District is now uh, given an order for a 20% mandatory reduction in water use, why housing isn't stopped dead in its tracks. Uh, I don't see why should we entice more people to, to live here in San Jose when we don't have a reliable source of water. And I think that this council should uh, take a leadership position and just stop residential housing, a residential housing moratorium, until water supplies have been stabilized and um, future predictions can be realized. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion to approve with the additions. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Move to the City Council agenda for March 11, 2014. The changes to page one. Two or three. Four or five. And that's it. Do you have any additions or amendments? None? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. David Wall. Uh, 4.2, the use of underutilized hotels slash motels to house the homeless. There are some interesting uh, omissions to this uh, very progressive uh, thought. 
One is just housing department funds going to be used. In other words, what funds are going to be used? That's a good question. And who is going to be given access? Is there going to be like a lottery system? Or is the Office of Economic Development going to use this in one of their unique ways of attracting people to San Jose? Come vacation in San Jose and claim you're homeless, then we'll put you up in a hotel for free. Um, so there's a lot of things that just aren't mentioned in here that should be uh, before this should go forward for a vote. It's a progressive idea. Uh, the funding issue needs to be resolved. Who gets access to the hotels for how long? And how does this affect also the uh, property values surrounding these hotels, whether they go up in value or down in value, is a function of this new program. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Move down to the review of upcoming study session agendas. I believe we have one on March 14. I think there's too many topics on here. I have a motion to approve. The agenda in your packet was originally said 1.30. I wanted to note that at 9 o'clock is the start time. Ooh. And I think if you flip to the back, we should say 9 a.m., right, instead of 9 p.m. to midnight or p.m.? Yeah, it's 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Okay. Oh, yeah. 9 a.m. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm looking at the front page, the yeah. cover. We'll fix it. What date is that? March 14th. Yeah. So it's 9 to 12. You need a motion to approve this? That's yes. 1.30? I already yeah. made a motion. Oh, you did? That's okay. It. And that's uh. purely discussion. Correct. Yes. And, and, and what is it? What's the topic of that one? Workforce support development. Where are we? Okay. Oh, they're right there. Okay. Okay, we have a motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There are none. Motion carries. Uh, legislative updates. We have none. Meeting schedules. We have none. The public record is next. David Wall. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Um, item A, entitled, Has a Quantitative Odor Study Been Conducted to Substantiate Mechanical Dewatering of Digested Sewage Sludge? Has, has it been done? Now, this is a very contentious uh, issue uh, we have in today's lobby, a member of the Honorable uh, McCarthy Ranch family. And this will come up later in today's soiree uh, with reference to uh, the property that's going to be unwound with reference to the sludge lagoons. Now, the city of Milpitas has, Newbie Island appears to have a Milpitas address of 1601 Dixon Landing Road, Milpitas, California. <coughs> now, the city of Milpitas also has a defunct sewage treatment plant, mainly just a pumping station. These two places that I've just mentioned within the city of Milpitas uh, create an enormous amount of odors. And I contend, my own, from my opinion, that the plant master plan was, first of all, a complete waste of money and an atrocity. It was just an economic development plan. But nonetheless, the plant master plan, in addition to the uh, decision of the McCarthy Ranch family to unwind a contract with the water pollution control plant to go forward with residential development and retail development adjacent to the uh, lagoon properties, the issue of odors is more or less a red herring. And moving the most environmental way to dry digested sewage sludge, which is solar, would be very contrary to the mayor's green vision and extremely costly. I don't think anybody, I mean, uh, the upward figure of over 500 million was discussed, but it's going to be far more expensive than that because you're dealing with having a dedicated engine, mechanical dewatering, you're going to have to put it all under a structure. Thank you. Thank you. We get a motion? Motion Summer. to note and file. Second. We have a motion to note and file. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. We have nothing under boards, commissions, and committees. We'll now move to item G, rules committee reviews, recommendations, and approvals. G2, District 9, celebrate Cambrian Festival. Motion, Motion to approve. We, with enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> we also need a sunshine waiver to place it on the March 4th. So, so made with the waivers. You need it for this? Yes. yes we'll we put it on later because it's not till August. 
yes, we didn't want to change their memo, but we're making sure all of the ones from the future now go two weeks out. This is probably the last one that'll do a one week. That's fine. Let's just put it on the 11th. I don't. It, okay. It's, so I don't think again, it. Warrants. Yeah, you can put it on the 11th. Motion with a waiver. Okay, I I don't support a waiver on Sunshine unless there's an urgency need for it. Yeah. So you're saying just put it on. So I'll make a I'll make a since there was no second I'll make a motion to put this on the agenda on the 11th and it won't need one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. David Wall. Thank you. Um, my running objection is just in language and accounting that the funds raised during this event are to pay for the funds or district related events separate and distinct from monies raised to augment a candidate's uh, campaign pursuits. Uh, in other words, monies raised from this should not go in any type of committee to elect. And I think the language should be restrictive and very definitive to prohibit this type of city-sponsored events being basically a quasi-fundraising event for any council member. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion to place this item on the March 11th council agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Move down to item three. Motion approved. Second. Okay, um, any yeah. discussion? Councilman Herrera. What, what's the motion? What is the motion to approve what? What are we talking about? G3. G3. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. the uh, it's my memo on the police budget. I'm sure I'm passing. <laughs> <laughs> I had mentioned last week that I would be bringing it back, and here we are again. The motion is to place a charter amendment on the March 4 City Council agenda for council consideration. Um, this June 2004 ballot initiative would allocate 40 percent of the general fund to the police department. You know, I'm very interested in um, in in having a council discussion about this item. I'm, I'm just trying to decide what's more. You know, how, how do we bring it uh, to a proper forum? And I, I know that there's other um, ballot initiatives that have been suggested, tax, uh, you know, possible initiatives for, for increase in taxes. And I know that we're going to have a budget discussion about that. So can staff en enlighten me as to when, wh when are we having discussions about some of the other measures that have the, been proposed? The library tax measure already appears on the March 4th agenda. Uh, that will be for consideration to place on the ballot. March 4th is your last regular council meeting to place an item for the June ballot. Uh, the other discussions are coming back after s some additional staff work, i.e. sales tax, um, and um, any other proposed charter amendments. So the, the other ones that are coming back are looking at a, at a, at a date it would, be the November, it would be November. They're looking at November. November ballot. I expect we would be coming back and looking at the city manager probably June, and right. then it's part of the budget yeah. process. So through both the proposed budget and discussions around uh, the May time frame. Well, I I don't support this measure, but I heartily support the council's ability to discuss it. So I'm going to support the motion. Councilmember Costin. I just want to make sure, uh, Councilmember Oliverio. This motion included a sunshine waiver since this is time sensitive and has oh, to yes, be. Yes, it would have a sunshine waiver. And I would note that if it passes, um, we don't have any proposed charter language today, so it could be. I imagine we'll do it on the dais. It's, well, <laughs> I'm going to try to avoid that, uh, at least getting a draft out. And I think we would endeavor to get something out by Friday, but it could be Monday. Well, I'm not going to support this, and I, I stated uh, my comments from last week, but it's I think this is a budget item. I, I, I am very interested to see, you know, how this is going to affect some of the other departments. If we allocate 40 percent to the police department, which is probably something that's needed, um, but I like to see the impact that's going to have on, on other departments. We do have various programs and services that the city provides, and it's not just for police um, and, and public safety. So I'm not going to support this. And if I could just say before you call up the speakers, um, as I mentioned last week, I don't necessarily know if I will support this going on the ballot at this time or the exact percentage or anything like that, but I think it's important that we have the discussion. I think it's important that we have the discussion before we discuss any other ballot initiatives related to raising taxes or anything like that. That's, that's right. why I support the discussion. And that's why I'm making the deciding vote here to do this. Um, I, I probably will vote no on this because uh, I, I don't like budgets being carved up and 
earmarked for specific things. I voted no before on that. I didn't support the library parcel when it was allowed to do that. But you know, the one thing I do support more than anything is our democracy and the right for people to bring forth ideas, even if they're ideas I don't agree with. And I trust our council to have that discussion. And I hope that the public will come forward and that we get to have a very vociferous and uh, an active debate about how we spend our money, how, how, how we're going to spend our money going forward. So I look forward to that debate. And I actually don't think this will pass. And I will, I will be voting against it in its current form anyway. But I look forward to the debate. OK. Um, we have several speaker cards. Uh, Dave Truslow. Thank you very much. I'm Dave Truslow with the Citizens for Fiscal Responsibility. And thank you very much for bringing this up. If money were the issue, um, wonderful. Money isn't, you know, problems are easy to solve, frankly, if it's just money. We submitted a series of public uh, records requests, and I'd like to share some of those findings with you. They bear directly on this. First of all, um, what is our attrition rate for new academy graduates? It's 26%, so we're losing one out of every four people that come through our academy. If you use the city's cost figures, that nets out to about 4.2 million per year. It's again, the city's number is 170,000 per, per recruit. On top of that, when I looked at the attrition data, and I'm being very conservative because I'm not taking the, the academy where we basically nuked off everybody because of budget, so it's only the past three years. And then I went through the attrition rate of our police department. We have 71 openings, as you probably remember when uh, Deputy, um, excuse me, uh, uh, the Assistant Chief uh, Garcia at the buddy's budget study session. But I took the inboarding of new academy recruits, how many we're losing, and these aren't disciplinary reasons, these are retirements and resignations. We are losing 58 officers per year. Now, I filed a request asking what the plan was to bring the force up to speed, and they said there's no data, no records. But if you do the math with the head, with the head count that uh, uh, Mr. Garcia provided, we will be out of police, everybody, in less than 20 years at the current rate. I think that's a pretty scary item. Um, another thing is that we are not doing exit interviews. I asked about that. So why are employees leaving? Well, we don't know. And that is troubling, very troubling. Every major corporation does exit interviews. And I also asked about employee satisfaction surveys. How do our officers, how do our public safety employees, I'm sorry, just limited to the police, feel about it? And nobody thank has you. any information. That's important, so thank you. David Wall. The San Jose Police Department is the lowest paid police department in the Bay Area. They can walk across the street. As a matter of fact, Madam Vice Mayor, before TPAC last uh, week, a Santa Clara Council person boasted of taking 10 of our officers with over 10 years experience in, in merge unit, homicide, detectives, and whatnot. They step over into Santa Clara, they see uh, a net pay increase of $39,000 and change. In addition, they see a net decrease of approximately 10% of a contribution to their retirement uh, obligations. Here in San Jose, the San Jose police officers are paying 22% into their retirement. So that's one area that you have to fix before you come up with allocating a certain percentage of the budget towards the police. Because it doesn't really matter. They're just going to leave anyway. There's not one police officer worth their salt is going to stick around. Furthermore, allocating a certain budget uh, allocation to the police only and not including the fire department is also not, not really appropriate. You need to get public safety, police and fire, off the general fund and create their own funding. And how you do that is where you're going to get the vociferous uh, debate from citizens. I contend it should be annuity-based hiring uh, from sales tax revenue that is a dedicated, restricted use fund, can be used for no other purpose that is incongruent with what Councilmember Campos is proposing. Thank you. Martha O'Connor. This is a simple motion, doesn't have anything to do with all due respect to the two previous speakers. The issue is simple. Do you want the council to discuss it or not? That's the motion. I agree with Councilperson Herrera. I am not in favor of it, but I think the whole council should discuss it. And I'll just 
talk really fast, I can tell you my favorite line from the movie 1776. The, ca the, the representatives are divided down the middle on whether or not to discuss independence. However, there's one mountain man who's out, as he says, using the privy, and he comes in and they tell him, you're the deciding vote, and they tell him what it's about, and he says, hell yes, I'm for discussing anything. So I'm glad that you, it looks like we're gonna get the votes to bring this to a full council discussion. Okay, that concludes the uh, public comments. Uh, we have a motion to put the item on the March 4th City Council agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One. Motion passes. <laughs> we'll move down to item four, update on yeah. workforce support and development strategy and employment engagement. Was that an official comment, by the way, on the record? I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. Second. We can have all the discussion at the study session. Sounds good to me. Uh, Dave Treslow? We're working our way down the agenda. Manager to improve our workforce. It's, it's vitally needed. Some of the same comments, though, are still true, and that is how do we know what to improve if we don't do exit interviews and if we don't have employee satisfaction surveys? In one particular area, it's an area that I have to know, I think, a little bit about and has studied extensively, is the e-ideas program. As is documented here, we've had no ideas since July of last year. This is appalling. We should be saving millions of dollars. And I also want to thank the clerk's office because they were very helpful in going back through the records, some of which date to 1966, to look what this city has accomplished with employee suggestions. And it is awesome. But it didn't require elaborate technology, which is what is stated here. It was done manually. That's what IBM stands for. It's better manually. And we saved millions. So I would urge us to move forward immediately. We don't need to roll out Microsoft. We don't need to do anything. We just need to do it. We have that track record. Thank you. David Wall. I would like to uh, first thank our city manager for two appointments that he's made to better the workforce, one of which was the ascension of uh, Mr. Noberto Duenas to acting assistant city manager. I think he should be made permanent assistant manager, but that's my opinion. And also through the appointment of Ms. Jennifer McGuire to a member of TPAC. Uh, TPAC has long needed uh, someone with budget expertise to oversee uh, the vast sums of money that uh, goes by the Treatment Plan Advisory Committee within a twinkling of an eye, uh, especially with reference to $2.2 billion of a capital improvement program entrusted to people of questionable uh, ex expertise and demonstrative uh, incompetence. Also, lastly, uh, one of the things to make the workforce a little bit better as we note, our venerable and honorable city manager is without a necktie. This might uh, signal a more comforting workplace attire that I can only further uh, augment by the recommendation that people adopt uh, bib overalls. Uh, once you step into yeah. these, you don't want to step out of them. Thank you very much. I just, want to, I just want to say for the record, I think it's been my influence on Ed that's got him to lose the tie. So. Okay, we have a motion to accept the report and set the council study session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Mo motion carries. Yeah, we'll move down to item though. five, the McCarthy Ranch property development restrictions. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Wait, um, yeah, Council Member Herrera. Question. So we want to make sure this is um, agendized. Uh, I think it's, it's March 11th, Correct. is that mm -hmm. right? So yep. it's March 11th. Great. Okay. Okay. Um, we have two speaker cards, Cheney Kleinhartz. Good afternoon, Jenny Kleinhaus with Santa Clara Valley Audubon Society. Uh, the development agreement on McCarthy Ranch property it was um, in a, a result of litigation of Santa Clara Valley Audubon Society against the city and McCarthy Ranch. And the reason for the uh, litigation was our concern that housing and uh, residential development close to the uh, Peyote Creek Corridor uh, poses a risk to wildlife and birds. Um, the land was supposed to be six acres of open space in agricultural and recreation uses, and the rest of it is also part of the litigation. I do not, I think it's premature to move forward and schedule anything before we have 
had a chance to discuss with the city the implications of our litigations and partnership in this. I think we're signatory to any f moving forward on this, and it's premature. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Question for uh, Do you reside in San Jose? Personally, I don't. We okay, have about 2,000 members in San Jose. David Wall. Look at the uh, mayor's uh, item number B, verification that no odor problem exists based on an odor modeling methodology to be determined. Now, all of you mayoral candidates uh, that are supporting this better be very wearful because you have no idea how much this is going to cost. None whatsoever. In addition, you have no idea that the mechanical dewatering process will create sludge that is not dry enough currently to be used as landfill cover. So you don't know where to get rid of this stuff once you mechanically dry it. You have to hire a higher level of employees to maintain these dewatering devices. You're going to have to build a structure over this operation. You're going to have increased energy costs for a diesel engine to provide the electricity for this whole process. You might even get a, uh, you might even violate cap and trade. Remember, you're going from a solar drying process that costs next to nothing to what you folks are voting to go down this road. And this is from the bastard loins of that plant master plan, uh, which was a complete waste of public monies. Now, you know, all I can do is warn you about it, like I've warned you for years. Uh, I keep on doing it. This is a horrible idea of mechanical dewatering of digested sludge. Thank you. We have a motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, we'll move down to item H. We have nothing. Open government, nothing. Open forums. David Wall. This uh, issue goes directly to the capital improvement program at the water pollution control plant, the $2.2 billion of public monies. Now, I have produced documents showing that two engineers, a principal engineer that does not have a professional engineering certificate as required by the job classification with the city of San Jose. Now, this PE is is from the California State of California Consumer Affairs, where they give a test to, li to licensed engineers. Now, this principal engineer is directly involved in the decision-making note, cannot sign off on any engineering drawing presented by either contracted engineers or city engineers. In other words, this person's taking a ton of money for just showing up. An equivalent would be having somebody run the attorney's office that's not an attorney. Okay, couldn't go to court, couldn't do anything. That's the equivalent. Now, there's also a senior engineer from Public Works who also is unlicensed. Now, part of city job classification, all senior engineers and above, principals or above a senior, have to have this licensure. So why is this being allowed to occur after I brought it through documentation on org charts, public record documents, how come these individuals aren't demoted down to an associate engineer position and the appropriate disciplinary actions taken to the people that hired them in the first place? Now, this is serious business. In addition, with the number of overheads that are locked onto the CIP program budget from public works, the master agreement says only one overhead position. And I'm certain that there's at least 13 or 14, but I'm, I don't know because the public records manager's office is basically not answering any public record requests that I know of for some time. And so that's another problem. Thank you. Jeff Bredola. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, there's a big whiteboard up near No, Bowen High School. That's why I keep coming on this issue. PD 12047 invites people to come in and talk. Um, this is what I wanted to say today. Um, that a, a rule of law is a stopple. It means basically silence is assent. Um, yesterday I spoke in open forum council and, and that principle applies, I think, because I said that it's impossible for the council to even consider it uh, PD 12047, 
um, for the reasons I gave there. That means that the matter uh, shouldn't be referred by the Rules and Open Government Committee. After my talk, as I was leaving, somebody asked me, what is my interest? I said I, I don't have an interest. I guess I do, though. Um, I put public interest on the yellow card. And um, lastly, it, it can be hard to see where the path leads, OK? Um, it's not necessary to know what the destination is, just that it's the right road. Um, that's what I came up with. And that's why I'm here. And uh, isn't that in the public interest? Thank you. That concludes the public comment. That concludes our meeting. We are adjourned. Mm -hmm. yeah.